Welcome back. For the last 27 years, Catherine Fernandez Rundle has been the state attorney for Miami Dade County. Rundle, who turned 70 in March, has not faced a serious challenger in eight years. But this year, that changes. Melba Pearson is the former deputy director of the American Civil Liberties Union. She was also a prosecutor for 16 years. And this week, she made it known she will challenge Rundle by running against her in this summer's Democratic primary. Melba, thank you for coming in. Thank you for having me, Jim. So why are you running for state attorney? Jim, I'm running because it is time for a fresh approach to criminal justice in Miami-Dade County. Today alone, we have close to 4,000 people that are in custody, not because they've been convicted of a crime, but because the mass majority of them cannot afford to bond out. That is problematic, and that is not justice. We have grave racial disparities where we have black Miamians facing almost three times as harsher penalties at every stage in the criminal justice system. This has to change, and this comes from policies that are stuck in the 80s, and we really need to uh, embrace effective criminal justice reform in this county, and our team is going to bring that. So what would you change? Oh my gosh, so many things. But I'll start with bail reform and the fact that low level felonies and misdemeanors, people should be released on their own recognizance in conjunction with services. Because that, number one, addresses the drivers of why somebody's in the criminal justice system. And secondly, it reduces recidivism, which saves the taxpayers and keeps our community safe. So if I'm sitting at home, do I think to myself, it sounds like you want to be a friendly state attorney. I want a state attorney who's going to be mean and vicious and go after the bad guys. And you're talking about letting some of those bad guys out on own recognizance. Well, let's look at this from a different perspective. That was very much the mentality back in the 80s and 90s when folks were very about the tough on crime, war on drugs type of mentality. But as we've evolved as a country, we've looked at the data and realized that those policies have failed. Those policies do not keep our community safe and is costing the taxpayers so much money that could be diverted to resources like our schools, paying teachers more, so many other things. So we have to look at what is effective and make sure that we're being smart on crime. I want to make sure that resources go to the most violent crimes and that victims who come forward are believed, are supported, and have resources to be able to get their lives back together after or having a horrible thing happen to them. You talked about victims uh, being believed. It sort of brings to mind the case of uh, Haya police officer, highly a police officer, Sergeant Jesse Munnicol Jr. There were four women who said that the police officer had sexually assaulted them, uh, and Rundle declined to bring any charges against them. And what we eventually learned was that she didn't even do interviews with several of the victims. Uh, saying that, a, essentially saying that this was a case that could not be brought, and then we come to find out the federal, the federal government, the FBI arrested men in call recently, and the U.S. Attorney's Office is now prosecuting. What does it say to you that the U.S. Attorney's Office is willing to bring a case against a highly police sergeant accused of raping women? when the Miami-Dade State Attorney's Office wouldn't. It horrifies me and disgusts me because it's based on the same set of evidence. It's not that the federal uh, authorities found new evidence that allowed them to move forward. And what disturbed me the most is that you had a young girl who was classified as a bipolar gang member runaway. And as a result of that, her story could never be credible. If they had spoken to the other three victims, looked for similarities, charges could have been filed. And just, but just that willingness to discard a young woman of color and not believing her story, not supporting her, is a clear failure. And that's something that would be at the top of my list to address when I win this race for state attorney. Is, it, is that case an aberration? Do you think Grundo overall is a good job in bringing cases? Listen, I worked in that office for 16 years. I know her well. I respect her as a person. I disagree with a lot of the policies. And I think this case is symptomatic of some deeper issues going on in the office. And that is something that's been reinforced by what many folks have told me since my departure, that there's just been this downhill slide with regards to being reasonable and looking at the totality of the circumstances and just retreating to policies that are in effective and damaging to our community. Now, now, the job of state attorney is a tough one. You have to make these decisions. You have to live with these decisions. Sometimes you're not going to make decisions that are not popular, that people may disagree with. You know, how do you, how do you balance those factors out? So, 
I did this work. And I was the one who had to sit down and decide whether or not there was enough to file charges, whether or not someone should go to prison or should they be on probation? Is the way, there a way that we can use restorative justice and rehabilitate this person to make things better overall? Do you think so, there's a benefit to having been a in-court prosecutor running that office as opposed to, I, I don't know the last time Catherine Fernandez Rundle was actually in a courtroom dealing with a case. It certainly was not within the last 30 to 35 years. I can assure you of that. Um, the last time I got up and announced my name on behalf of the state of Florida to prosecute a homicide case was just about three years ago. And I still stay very much current by providing legal commentary on a number of different cases. So that benefit is that I am still, my skills are still sharp. I can still look at a case, analyze it in less than five minutes and figure out what needs to be done, what the follow-up needs to happen. And because of that, the staff will trust me and the prosecutors will follow my example. What do you hear from folks inside the office? What's the morale like inside the office these days? The morale has been very low, and that's one of, another one of the reasons why I'm running, because I was approached by so many different groups of people, different groups, whether it be police officers, activists, community groups, victims groups, and prosecutors. People who I'd trained and mentored were literally begging me, please, you need to run, because this office is not running at its full capacity in the way that it could, and is not maximizing its potential. Is that inherent in, I said at the outset, she's been in office since 1993. She was appointed when Janet Reno, think of it, when Janet Reno became Attorney General of the United States, Fernandez Rondo uh, was elevated to the position of state attorney and she's won every race since. You're not the first person to challenge her. The, you know, she's been able to beat back other, other opponents. What makes you think you can beat her this time? Because times have changed. The electorate has changed. They're much more savvy when it comes to prosecutors' races. People are paying more attention to what the po what power that prosecutors have. The Darren Rainey case was a rallying call for so many people. This was the this was the inmate who died in custody. Who there still continues to be a great deal of controversy over whether or not he was burned and scalded inside a hot shower. The nature of his death. Anyone seen those pictures? Horrific. Utterly horrific. And this is part of the reason why people have started to, you know, that drumbeat has started to say it's time for a change. It's time for a change. So the recent high profile missteps definitely makes this race a game changer. And also, I'm a different kind of candidate. I'm very different than anyone else who has challenged her in the past. I've done the work, I know the community, I, I, I have a background in civil rights as well as criminal work. So I'm ready. Melba, well, this is the beginning of this campaign. We'll have you back. And of course, Catherine Fernandez Rundle is more than welcome. We look forward to having Catherine Fernandez Rundle here in the studio as well. All right. Thank you very much. We'll be right back after the break.